So I'm sure by now most of you have heard of DALI, or is it DALI? I don't know. Anyway, it's this new AI that's able to produce quite an incredible array of art. Although in some cases it's not really incredible as it is really really creepy. So this here is Anton making videos on YouTube. And this one here is super creepy. Because it does have some odd resemblance to me, yet it doesn't. Oof. Anyway, I don't want to look at this anymore. With the second version of this so-called Dell E now being able to produce incredible art. For example, very recently Cosmopolitan magazine published this, created by Dell E2, and apparently it took only 20 seconds to create this cover art. Which, if I was a visual artist, would scare me so much. Because, as the title here says, AI is going to be taking all our jobs. This right here is the face of a future employee. I actually ended up making a bunch of these, with this one being robots taking all our jobs. And I actually wanted to discuss more about these AI projects in some of the future videos, but today we're focusing on something entirely different, something with a very specific idea that connects to some of the videos about the human brain and about human neurons that you can learn more about in the link somewhere right there or in the description. We're talking about the idea of a supercomputer that at least mathematically seems to be performing on the same level as the human brain. Something that was just reported coming from China and a supercomputer they refer to as Bagualu. With all of the links and the studies obviously in the description below. And so I really wanted to discuss this in more detail because it's both disturbing, scary, but also super exciting. And honestly, all of this sort of started to explode in the last few years. For example, once again in China, just a few years ago, one of these supercomputers known as Tianhe was actually used to rapidly screen and discover new pharmaceuticals in order to help with the production of drugs during the initial stages of the pandemic. And something extremely similar was done in Japan, something similar was done in the US. And as of last year, Japan was technically at the forefront. Although just a few months ago, US has also announced its most powerful supercomputer ever, which seems to be the Japanese one by just a little bit. But now imagine taking one of these supercomputers and then putting some of the most advanced AI models in order to try to run them on these computers as fast as you can. What's going to be the result? Well, that's pretty much what they did in this study. In this case, Bagualu refers to the idea behind training these brain scale models on a very complex and very fast computer, in this case a supercomputer, in order to create the most complex AI ever. Scary? Yes. Exciting? Also yes. And in the process, they were able to achieve approximately 1 exaflops of operation, with the model being approximately 14.5 trillion parameters in size. Or to give you a more biological perspective, approximately 14.5 trillion connections between separate neurons. Although I'm kind of oversimplifying things here, mostly because neurons are just way way more complex than a simple algorithm in a computer. We've talked about this in that video I mentioned before. It's also in the description. But if they were to push this to its limits, it's actually possible to train this to approximately 174 trillion parameters, which at least in theory would not really be that far off from the amount of different connections in our own brains. Although here it's a little bit more tricky because our brains generally produce a tremendously diverse amount of connections between neurons. It can be just a few or actually several hundred. And so in theory, our brains could even have 10 times more connections compared to this particular supercomputer. And connections in this case would be this, the synapses between different neurons that result in the production of various chemical signals that then turn into electrical signals. Whereas our friend Dali right here uses approximately 12 billion connections to generate these creepy images. Whereas the Chinese supercomputer and our brain uses trillions. So basically a thousand times more. But in their study, the scientists claimed that they were able to create an AI that was about a thousand times more complex than DALI and in theory could be approximately ten times even more complex, operating in a similar complexity to a human brain. But that's of course in theory, and that's of course assuming that our brain operates on a somewhat similar principle. It doesn't. As we've discussed in the previous video, and as we're going to be discussing in the future videos on neurons in the brain, our brains are just entirely different in the way they operate on the inside. And so even though modern AI can actually sort of mimic some of the functions of the brain, in its entirety it does not function in the same way at all. But I'm actually going to be talking more about this in a video that's coming up really soon, where we're going to be discussing the unusual AI that Google might have produced, that some scientists are claiming could have become sort of self-aware. More about this later, so make sure to subscribe, because we're going to be talking about this in many different videos. 
And essentially, after running this AI on the supercomputer, the first thing the scientists report in their paper is that, well, they've reached the limit in terms of the ability of AI to generate anything useful. And that's of course because modern algorithms are just a little bit too simple for these supercomputers. In other words, they can produce images, they can produce text, they can even mimic certain functions of a typical human, but they're not really able to produce anything super complex just yet. Or, chances are they might never be able to produce everything. In other words, despite having a relatively similar number of parameters or connections in our brains compared to that supercomputer, they're not really functioning on a single level at all. This, despite being small and relatively energy efficient, still beats this. Not so energy efficient, not so small. Which actually is a really important point. It sort of highlights how absolutely ridiculous and how super complex our brains are and how efficient they are at doing what they do the best. Human brain is the only such phenomenon on the entire planet that's able to generate so many ridiculously complex ideas without using huge amounts of power. You can literally do all of this by just eating an apple. Whereas in this case, the supercomputer was using 37 million CPU cores and approximately 9 petabytes of memory, with roughly around 96,000 different computer systems running all of this. And though they was producing approximately 23 petabytes per second of data, it's still incomparable to the human brain. We're still faster. Actually, what I'm showing you here is the American version, that's the computer that's supposed to be almost as powerful, and it's the one that was revealed just a few months ago. I don't really have the image of the Chinese computer. So even though it mimics the amount of connections in our brains, it's obviously far from being able to create an actual human inside a computer. And mostly because these models we're using today, they're just way too simple, and because even today it's practically impossible for us to recreate what happens inside a human brain. But in terms of the achievements coming from the paper, it's really in regards to the efficiency of the project. Here the scientists were able to use various types of proprietary chips that actually created an extremely energy efficient process. And because of its power and efficiency, this computer would now be perfect for any kind of artificial intelligence involving computer vision, or for example for production of new drugs, or for various other projects that usually involve supercomputers, such as simulating weather patterns, or also I guess predicting stock market. As a matter of fact, the primary application for this is probably going to be artificial vision, or basically computer vision. So for example, autonomous vehicle technology, where the computer vision has to be really, really fast and react to various conditions on the road, would definitely be able to benefit from this and would be able to create something that operates so much better and so much safer. In other words, I don't expect this to lead to some kind of a artificial intelligence living inside a computer and possibly even taking over the world, but I do expect this to become a tool that's used in pharmacology, a tool that's used in various weather simulations, and just like with the Japanese and the American supercomputers, it's also going to be used in astronomy quite a lot. But human brain, it is not. Not nearly as efficient as what we have inside our nuggets. But we'll talk more about the idea of AI possibly becoming self-aware, and if it ever has done so, in the video that's going to be coming out really soon. Because when it comes to this particular study, one of the major components here is really the weakness that the scientists uh, uncovered. They realized that the computer was so powerful that it actually exposed current techniques to be quite inefficient in processing data. Now, they mostly used different types of visual images and language processing AI to do this, and here they found that, well, the algorithm was just not very good. As in, once the things become really complex, it sort of does a lot of redundant things and does not improve at all. It still sort of remains as simple as it originally was. Which once again means that just by having more connections inside a typical algorithm is not suddenly going to turn it into some kind of a super intelligent being. As a matter of fact, according to the scientists, it might do the opposite. It seems to create an AI that's maybe a little bit less on the smart side. AI that's still good at doing one thing, but not so good at being an intelligence as a whole. Okay, these images are really, really creepy. Anyway, so the whole point is that they have a supercomputer that's really powerful, but we don't really have to worry about AI taking over just yet. More about this later. Nevertheless, there are still some unnerving things about all of this, specifically in regards to job security. Because whether you are a visual artist, or a writer, or, for example, an interpreter, we've now reached the point where AI sort of does things a little bit better and a little bit faster point that's made pretty clear by this new cover from the Cosmopolitan magazine. And the way things are going, maybe in 5 to 10 years, you're going to be watching an AI telling you all of this and not really me, so I'm gonna have to start making some plans before I officially retire. 
But I guess for now that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. It's still a pretty interesting achievement, but at the moment these supercomputers are really more of a competition between different countries to see who can create something more powerful. And for now it looks like China is slightly ahead of the one from the US. But other than that, well that's pretty much it. Check out all the links in the description below, check out that previous video about neurons and the human brain, and come back to watch that other video about the AI and the possibility of AI becoming self-aware in one of the future videos as well. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about science, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Aww, that's sweet. That's what Dali came up with for my prompt of stay wonderful. Still creepy though, but kind of cute. On that note, bye bye.